Hi, sport fans. Patrick Barrett here, creator of Driver in the Box, of course, and your favorite driver education guru. Yes, as my grandson says, the world's greatest driving instructor. Okay. Oh, there's some truth to that, possibly. All right, so here's what we're talking about today. Commentary. We did a session on that previously. Now we're going to talk a little bit more about what it is and how to use it effectively when you're coaching and supervising your teen's practice. Remember, commentary is the use of a single word or phrase that describes what's going on in the traffic scene or what you want the person to do. So, how do you use that and how do you use that effectively? Of course, we have a list of 86 commentary terms that you'll go through in our materials, but more than that, it's also an understanding of the concept of how this works. If you ever saw the movie The Karate Kid and then uh, old daniel son has to go to Mr. Miyagi for the training, well, that's a lot of what some of this is, you know. What are you doing? Wax on, wax off, okay? Sand the floor, sand the floor, you know. You remember the other one? Paint the fence, paint the fence. What are you doing? It over and over and over again. And he's saying, am I ever going to learn to do anything? And, you know, that's almost what you feel like sometimes when you're in the parking lot going through some of these things. But why is that important? Because you're establishing patterns of behavior habits. And if you want mastery of skills, you're going to have to go to Mr. Miyagi school. <laughs> okay, so what are we talking about specifically today with the use of commentary? We're going to talk about how you use commentary in a lane change. All right, so how do you coach the student through the lane change and what commentary should the student use during a lane change? Actually, the commentary is the, the acronym SMOG, S-M-O-G. Well, that stands for Signal, they check the mirror, they look over the shoulder, and if it's safe, then they go. Very simple. So how do you coach through that? First of all, you say, is it clear up ahead? Of course, it should be. I said, do you see all the lane, okay, all the extra space we have up there? It says, when I tell you to, we're going to make a lane change over to the left. And what's the sequence? You ask the question. What's the sequence? Remember, questions do what? They direct the mind. So that's how you control. Well, uh, and if they're stuck, you guide them through it. The first, well, how do we let them know what we're going to do? You don't tell them to signal. You say, how do we let them know that we're going to make a lane change? And they say, oh, signal. So they say, signal. Is, is there anyone behind us? And they look, mirror. And the mirror isn't just here, it's what? It's there next, because after they look to the left, where they look? That's right. Then, oh, over the shoulder. And then, is it clear? Then you gradually move into that lane. Not abruptly, not too quickly, not too slowly, just smoothly into the lane. Pretty simple, pretty easy, but follow that sequence. And notice how we did that. We asked questions, and then right after the student completes it, what well, do you say? Great, do it again. And then do it again to the right, following the same sequence. Signal, mirror, over the shoulder, and then go. Watch for a couple things when they make that lane change. One, when they turn their head, are they turning their shoulder? Should be able to keep the shoulder square and be able to turn their head, because all they're looking is something's in their blind spot. Okay, uh, the mirrors, remember, have been moved to where they can uh, see what's outside of that. You're just looking for that area that's right next to them, the blind spot. Now, some people actually teach that if you move that mirror out wide enough, you don't have to turn your head. Big mistake. If you move that mirror out enough, okay, you might be able to cover another area of that lane, but it doesn't mean you've eliminated the blind spot. All you've done is moved it. Plus, what you have to keep in mind is you're establishing a pattern of behavior. What does that mean? If they're thinking, well, there's only two lanes here, me and this other lane, that's great. You're learning that sequence. Now you're going to get out on a freeway later on, and there's four lanes. And you think, well, I don't have to turn my head because all I'm looking at is the lane next to me when there's somebody from two lanes over who's moving the way over. And if you don't learn to turn your head and look over there uh, to, with that quick glance, you're not going to do that as a habit. You're not, you don't want the driver to have to think, is this a place where I've got to turn my head or is this a place where I don't have to turn my head? Okay, You understand. So what you're establishing are patterns of behavior because most driving is done at the other than conscious level. They're not going to think about it later on when they're driving. They're going to drive out of habits. So establish those habits now. So remember, what's the sequence for a lane change? We're going to make that lane change up ahead. All right, when it's safe, we're going to make a lane change to the left. Is there anyone behind us? Uh, no. Okay. What's the sequence? Signal, mirror, over the shoulder, clear, we go. That simple. And then after the end, then they cancel the signal if necessary. Well, have a great day today. Thanks very much. And remember, when you do practice, practice like your life depends on it because it does. And if you need any resources, any help at all, just go to www.driveredinabox.com and get one of our resources. We'll be glad to help you. We want to help you become a collision-free driver. Once again, 
Thanks for coming to Driver in the Box. Make sure if you haven't already that you subscribe to our channel. Maybe we can help you save a life. Bye now.